Greetings, I'm Professor K, and welcome to this short course overview on my Capture the Flag walkthroughs. Capture the Flag exercises allow us to take what we've learned in theory and actually apply it. The idea being that we can have all the lectures, we can watch all the PowerPoints, but until we can apply what it is we have learned, then none of that really matters. For this course, students will be using VirtualBox to create all of their virtual machines. All links for any software, the ISO downloads, and any OVA files that are needed for the labs are provided in the lab files. You're going to need to create at least one virtual install of Kali Linux and one virtual install for each of the target machines. Everyone should complete Section 2, which is the building of their virtual lab environment, before making any final purchases for this course. Most of the time, capture flag exercises are conducted by teams, but when we're just starting out and we want to be able to actually learn the tricks of the trade, so to speak, we can use these capture the flag exercises in our own private lab environment and we can learn forensics, cryptography, web exploitation, reverse engineering, and binary exploitation. It's one of the best ways to learn specific security skills. It also helps to build a hack of persistence. Now what that means is that you don't give up because a lot of times you're going to get stuck with these capture the flag exercises. Some things are going to change. Nothing remains constant when it comes to technology and that includes these capture the flag exercises. The OS's get upgraded, not the target so much, but the Kali installation. We have a, a different types of tools that suddenly become abandoned by the developers. And so maybe that tool is no longer able to work with the latest version of Kali. Well, that's going to require that you do some research and find your way around that wall that you suddenly hit. That is hacker's persistence. You don't give up. The preferred host operating system for this course or any Capture the Flag course would be a Windows operating system 7, 8, or 10. You can use a Mac machine and you can use Linux, but the preferred system would be a Windows 7, 8, or 10. You should have at least a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM, but 8 gigabytes is recommended. This is not to say that that's going to be enough. It all depends on a lot of other underlying variables such as your type of CPU, how many cores it has, what type of RAM you have, what type of hard drive are you using. So you can see that 8 gigabytes is barely enough. You're going to need a system BIOS capable of supporting virtualization. You're also going to need a high speed internet connection or a good internet connection because some of these ISO images and these target machines are very large. They're going to take some time to download. So make sure that you have all this in place before you sign up. And this is all part of completing Section 2 of the course, which is free. Complete that, and then you'll be able to see whether or not you're all set up and ready to move on with the rest of the Capture the Flag exercises. Well, as I previously mentioned, you should have that theory, that basic knowledge of what you need to know to understand what's actually going on inside of the course room with these capture the flag exercises. Do you know what a port is? Do you know what a protocol is? Do you understand port numbers? Do you understand how TCP IP communicates and allows devices to see each other on a network? Those are the things that you have to understand. If you can understand the basic principles of technology, of networking, then you'll probably be able to get through this course without a whole lot of grief and aggravation. Again, thank you for dropping by, and I do appreciate the patronage. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the course room.